I've been wanting to cover guacamole for some time now, and I've got a really good reason too. Well, other than the obvious. It's a fun, unique game, and it's one of the few Metroidvania games that I've ever played. No, my story for Guacamelee is the never judge a book by its cover story. Although technically, Guacamelee is a game and not a book, but you get the idea. Before I started my quest to play all of the games in my Steam library, I never would have given this game any thought. I bought a Steam Humble Bundle with a lot of great indie games in it. Games that we've already covered on this channel. Games like Bastion, Dust and Elysian Tale, and now this one, Guacamelee. I never gave it the chance because I've never been personally invested in wrestling or luchadors or... I mean, I don't like guacamole. I can almost say that I'm not interested in Mexican culture in general, but that would be a lie. There is stuff I do like from Mexico. The food, some of the people that I've met, Speedy Gonzales. And, well, you get the idea. So gather round, friends, and hear my version of Never Judge a Game by Its Cover. Or, more amply put, Don't Judge a Game by Its Topic. Today, or not today, we review, or not review, Guacamole. The story for Guacamole is very straightforward. Taken straight out of Mario. Boy likes girl, girl likes boy. Bad guy takes away girl. Boy goes to save girl. Bam! That's your story, kids! Of course, there wouldn't be much of a story if there wasn't more to it. You know, most stories are just recycling the same old, used concepts over and over, right? Tell me, how many stories do you know where the hero is happy, everything's great, and then he or she is forced into a fight, and then they have to go on some long, arduous journey, some adventure, to fight some great evil. Honestly, I can't even list all the different stories. There are just so many of them that have this template. This is basically the template for humanity's favorite story. Or at least mine. But for me, it just doesn't get old. But the thing that makes it different is the details in the story. How the hero goes from point A to point B to point C. How they progress, how they develop. It might be the same story, it might be the same template, but it changes based on every single character, and that is what makes your story worthwhile. For Guacamelee, the game starts you out playing the character Juan Argucate. I'm going to add here that I probably have just butchered his name. I could just go with calling him John, but I'm going to at least try to call him Juan. Don't make me go all Dora on you. La manzana debajo el ladibor. Juan is a farmer, and very much attracted to El Presidente's daughter. That's her name, seriously. She's unnamed. Never mind the status confusion of a farmer trying to marry El Presidente's daughter. <sighs> Oy vey. That'll just get me carried away on another tangent. But wait! Oh no! Before this newfound love interest can blossom, the villain, Carlos Calaca, has whisked her away, and now Juan must go save her. But what can he do? He is merely a farm boy. Oh, well, crap. I didn't think it was going to go that badly. So then Juan finds himself a magical luchador mask, and he is then bestowed the power of the luchador. With the help of a few wacky characters, and no end to upgrades, you can bet your bottom dollar that Juan is in for a wild adventure. So, a quick reminder, I played this whole game using a keyboard and mouse, but it does encourage you to play with the controller at the start of the game. It's also very clearly designed for a controller because of the colored attacks that should correspond with the colored buttons you'd find on an Xbox controller. But just know I got the hang of the keyboard controls and made it through just fine. Anyway, movement is always in 2D space, and combat is similar to a brawler. But before you become a luchador, you have one attack plus movement. That'll change super fast. Something 
everyone who has played a Metroidvania game can tell you is you tend to get upgrades often and there is a lot of backtracking when you get upgrades. I should probably explain what Metroidvania means. I have the luxury of knowing that I have a few viewers out there that have zero idea what that term means. It's very simple though. It's a term used to describe games similar to Metroid and Castlevania. That is, games which block your way to the next objective until you get a specific type of weapon, item, power-up, armor, etc. So too, in Guacamelee, there are many zones and levels and secrets, unobtainable until you unlock certain upgrades as a luchador. To add a bit more flair to the style of the game, each move is a type of wrestling stunt. I might be uninterested in wrestling, but good design is still very good design. The way you learn new techniques is by destroying a throwback reference to Metroid itself, a Chozo statue, called a Chuzu statue. Har har. They're not even trying to hide it. And then you get yelled at by this goat guy. It's all very cute, very funny, and very clever. <laughs> Now, you might not realize it, but one of the toughest parts of Guacamelee is learning and executing combos. For that, enter in Trainer Chicken and my favorite character, Poncho. These two are definitely comedy relief, but only after you've proven yourself worthy by executing various combinations of attacks. It's actually a very clever way to engage the player with learning new combos. After the practice with Poncho, you might never do that combo again. I don't think I ever use the down smash again outside of sparring with Poncho. I don't want to say too much more about the different moves you learn because it's always exciting to learn a new move. But just know that each move can serve as a combat technique and double as a method of transportation. Each and every technique will help you explore the guacamelee world. One final note, if you want to play as quickly as you can, try to avoid backtracking and finding secrets. One run through can take you anywhere from 6 to 14 hours, depending on how thorough you are, and the difficulty you selected at the start. My first time through took me 16 hours because I was going for a completion run, and then I still had to replay on the hardest difficulty to get the additional achievements. To add a bit of confusion to the mix, I noticed that there are two versions of Guacamelee for you to choose on Steam. Of course, assuming you're purchasing Guacamelee on Steam in the first place. Maybe you're looking to pick it up on console. Either way, good on you. You do you, buddy. But I have it on Steam. Guacamelee Gold Edition is the version I'm technically reviewing. But if you're going to purchase the game once, I'm guessing that Turbo Edition is probably the better choice since it has been more recently released. Although, I couldn't help but notice Gold Edition has more Steam achievements. Uh, <coughs> nope, gotta go with Gold now. You gotta get them achievements. Actually, in all honesty, if you've played Gold, you could probably pick up Turbo Championship Edition to just have the excuse to play through the whole game again. Goodness knows Drinkbox Studio made a fantastic game. I wonder what they're doing now. <gasps> As I said early at the start of this review, I was pleasantly surprised by what I got out of Guacamelee. I spent the time to play through the game twice even go after the toughest achievements. I had no idea that I was about to play one of my favorite indie games when I first booted the game up. I went into this game completely blind, and I'm so grateful for that experience, and that I started this crazy journey. I had a glance at my old Steam review for Guacamelee. It was posted May 28th, 2014 at 4.30 p.m. It seems so long ago. I only have three thumbs up on it, and I know that one of those thumbs up is me logging into my brother's account and liking it for him, which he was very disgusted about. <laughs> he said it's like giving yourself a high five. 
You know, I was just like, you should be liking my reviews anyway. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Like it. Like it so I don't need to. And, uh, does uh, anyone know any good Mexican food recipes? I need to broaden my horizons. All I make is pizza dough, tacos, and fried rice. I can only keep my ladylike complexion because I work out nearly every day. Comment. Please. Give a Trotsu a hand.